What is going on guys? My name is Hussain and in this video I want to go through seven things you can do to optimize your server-side uh, APIs. So you might notice that while working on building an API, your server takes around 3 milliseconds to execute that request. However, the client-side action might take around, I don't know, 700 milliseconds and you don't know where are this time spent. So in this video I want to kind of go through things that are obvious that makes you kind of optimize these and make your request and API more efficient. How about we jump into it? So the first thing is pay attention to your representation payload. So whether this is the return type, is it JSON, is it XML, is it protocol buffer? Because the serialization and deserialization cost can be really significant if you have kind of big payload, right? So pay attention to that, right? So XML is the worst, JSON is eh, but Oracle Buffer is the best for this. Sometimes it doesn't really it's not really applicable because uh, your protocol buffer, your API doesn't really have a rigid schema, but something to consider. So that's number one. Number two, try preheating connections. So if your client is for every request establishing a brand new TCP connection, especially if it's TCP, then that additional cost can add up and can slow down things because that's not the actual request. The cost of establishing TCP, the three-hand way shake, and then the cost of TLS, that can add up for every request. So you want to preheat this connection at the client side. I'm not talking about server side yet, right? And just try to keep them running and then send the request in these connection. So that's number two. Tip number three. So yeah, if you have and a web application, you might be using the HTTP protocol, whether this is HTTP 1 or HTTP 2 or even the new HTTP 3, then consider switching to HTTP 2 if you're sending a lot of requests in parallel. That's the main reason for this is H1, HTTP 1 has a problem of pipelining, right, which, which is allowing only one request per TCP connection to be sent at a given time. So with HTTP2, you have the ability of streams where using one TCP connection and you can send a lot of requests in that uh, TCP connection as streams. So switch to HTTP2, that might give you some more performance. And if you even can, try quick because you don't have that TCP meltdown, which is the next step. All right, tip number four. If you're using any sort of TCP connection, so this is HTTP1 or HTTP2 or your, your own uh, raw TCP framework or even gRPC uses TCP because it's used HTTP2, right? WebSockets, all of this is TCP and pay attention to the TCP meltdown problem because the more you close and open these connections, the slower things get. And there's another problem called the TCP head of line blocking, which if you start keeping, if you, if you keep sending requests, right and one of those packets get lost the server will and not acknowledge it the client will be responsible to retransmit that and that cost of retransmission obviously this is across oceans right if you're in the in a very high bandwidth network you don't get this but you get this tcp meltdown if you have a large connection like between different continents right so pay attention to this right so uh, the way to avoid it is preheat this connection as much as possible or try uh, keeping servers close to each other and if you can't right try switching too quick that's uh, that will minimize that problem but again quick is not really applicable between different intermediate nodes because some firewalls might block UDP let's keep that in mind tip number five and that's one of the most important one proxies and I'm talking about reverse proxies talking about caching layers I'm talking about uh, load balancers anything that is in the middle the more hops you have uh, even sidecar proxies if you, in case you're in a microservice or architecture right? like Lin Linkerd uh, Envoy or STO if you add more of these hops that cost of streaming the connection to the back end might be e extremely significant despite your server takes like maybe five milliseconds to execute the request these intermediate nodes might eat up your request and just watch out for that, right? 
try to switch maybe for a layer 4 load balancer if if you can right instead of using a layer 7 load balancer which or which actually looks at the data and try to terminate the TLS and re-establish the TLS at the back end. So all of these little bit nitty-gritty details can really add up and, and cost you. Tip number six, large payload. So you might, your server might take five, six milliseconds to actually execute and that request, right? And prepare the response. But after that, it will come up with a huge response and a huge payload. And this, backs, this comes back to a pay, uh, point number one, which is the serialization, right? The larger the payload, the, the slower the serialization becomes. Like, how do you convert this payload back to JSON or protocol buffer or XML if you're into that thing kind of thing yet? But pay, large payloads in general are a bad idea because the, these payloads needs to be broken down into multiple packets which will need to be transferred across the network each packet will need to be acknowledged again if you're using TCP well even if you're using quick these acknowledgement happen at the higher level but nevertheless right so these acknowledgement can slow things down so if you can send back a smaller payload I don't know if you don't need 700 fields don't select star 700 field from the database, right? Just return what the client absolutely needs. So that's another tip. And the last tip, tip number seven, watch out for client side processing. So that even if the server takes a little bit of a time, the serialization is great, there is no TCP meltdown, we're happy, but the client is actually doing some sort of a transformation after the fact it receives the response before presenting it to the user. Watch out for that because that client-side processing might actually slow you down. So if you're having an additional serve, uh, scripts that runs on the response or, or some side of uh, client-side processing, try to avoid that. Try to push that on the server if possible. However, sometimes the client-side processing is actually better than server-side processing. So weigh in, try, check out for trade-offs and kind of measure the performance and try and taste different things until you find your sweet spot and that's it guys that was like seven tips that you can do to optimize your backend apis i'm here in beautiful Antonidas. look at the ocean and i'll see you in the next one guys you guys stay awesome